What's good guys? So in this video, we're going to be going over weapon cooldowns. So as you see, I made a cooldown system for the weapons. Um, and you can't activate the weapon again until you've... Uh, until you've, um, you know, the cooldown's over. <laughs> Alright, so let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a, a script in server script. Let's start off with our cooldowns, okay? Let's just make our cooldowns real quick. That'll be the first thing to do. So cooldown, we're just going to make the cooldown stable. We're also going to uh, do a player added event and connect a function and in this we're going to say cooldowns player equals false equals false passing the player here and then now we're going to create a remote event so let's just say local uh, We'll just say local um, cooldown event equals instance.new remote event game get service replicated cooldown event dot name equals cooldown and then we will say uh, local on function on cooldown on get cooldown actually on get cooldown so this is going to be get cooldown and we want it to be a remote function not an event this is a remote function. Cooldown function. All right, so we just renamed it to get cooldown because this is going to be a remote function. I was tripping for a second. So this is going to be um, our function that happens when we invoke the server. So we're going to say. Uh, well, first we need to get the player, and then now we're going to say local cooldown, or we could say really player cooldown, I guess, if we want to be um, really thorough or whatever. Uh, so player cooldown equals um, equals cooldowns player and now we're going to say if player cooldown does not equal false then return um, true else return false okay and then we're going to say get cooldown dot on server invoke equals on get cooldown all right so this should be set up so basically what we're gonna do is um we also need a remote we we could use a remote event we could use a remote event so let's use a remote event too so We'll use local uh, uh, activated or yeah, local activated tool event equals instance dot new remote event game get service replicated storage. Okay, so activated tool event dot name equals 
Tools. Um, activated tool. Bang. So now we can say this local function on Player. Player or lower cooldowns. Player equals uh, tick. Yeah, we'll do tick. Or we could just say player. For now, we'll just say player five. Um. We'll just say yeah it equals five so then what we can do is we can say um uh, yeah let's try this first then we'll say um hmm down uh, we'll say um, cooldowns player minus equals one if cooldowns player equals zero then cooldowns player equals false break all right so this is basically saying that this is gonna do a uh, we'll actually do one this is basically gonna say that's gonna take away every second one from the cooldown phase and then uh, if cooldowns equals zero it's going to say cooldowns is actually equal to false and then it's going to break If cooldowns does not equal false, if cooldowns equals false, cooldowns equals false, if cooldowns equals false, return false. Alright, so this should work, this should work. Now we're going to create a local script. Alright, and we're gonna get the player's mouse, so local mouse equals game get service players dot local player get mouse mouse dot button one up connect function and then we're gonna uh, now we need to get um, local cooldown equals uh, get cooldown um, local get cooldown equals in get service replicated wait for a child get cooldown now we need our event local Activate the tool, equal game, get service, replicated, wait for child, activate the tool event. If cooldown equals false, then return. Or activate tool, fire server. All right, so let's see if this works. I, I, don't know, I have no idea if it's gonna work. We'll see. Well, actually, I think we need, um, actually, I think we need, uh, 
a print statement. We don't have a print statement to see if it really works. So what we could do is we could print cooldowns player. Okay. And then we can print here, print cooldown is active, so player cannot activate tool. Alright, so let's see if this works now. Attempt to call of instance value. Oh, we didn't invoke. Get cooldown invoke server. There we go. It should work now. Cooldown is active, so player cannot activate tool. Okay, we didn't activate the tool though the first time, so I guess maybe we can switch these. If cooldown equals false, then return true. If cooldown equals false, then can if player, we'll say if not, we'll say if not player that cooldown, then return false oh if cooldown so yeah if not cooldown we should be firing this so if cooldown all right so i think that was just a mess up on my, my logic there um so yeah cooldown is active hmm Let's see what let's see what's happening right there. Cooldown equals false. Let's print cooldowns. Print cooldowns here. And then we will uh cooldowns equals five. Print cooldown. We're doing that unactivated. Oh, we didn't connect this at all. So then maybe that's why. Um <laughs> activated tool event. Okay, so activated tool event dot on server event connect on activated tool. Let's see what happens now. And we got our cooldowns. Cooldowns equals false. Five, four, and also we can't we can't activate it. Now it's a zero. Can we activate it? Now we can activate it, but now we can't. Okay, so yeah. And that's pretty much how you would do it, guys. And so then if you have a tool equipped, you would just have a bool value or whatever that it is like local is equipped. So local is equipped. Um, and then, yeah, if it's equipped, um, then that's when tools activated and you can fire the, fire the event. Okay. And so that's all you would do to just make sure that it works with the tool. Um, but yeah, that's how you would kind of create a cooldown. I did it a different way, the way I did it. Um, but I thought that this was the more simple version, you know, for if you're a beginner um, or you're still working on fundamentals. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.